everyone, it's Casey. How are you doing? Today, um, I'm going to make a little video about the newest doll I plan to customize. This is a tiny little fake petite doll. Um, her eye is a little bit mangled because I already removed the eyelashes um, to kind of show someone how to do it. But otherwise, she really hasn't been touched. And so I thought we would kind of go through the process of taking her apart and customizing her. So there's only one little screw in the back of the petites and it comes out pretty easy. They're pretty easy to take apart. This of course is a fake and as you know from previous videos, um, it's not always the same taking apart a fake as an authentic. So it might be different if you're working on an authentic petite. I don't have one currently, so I can't tell you. Um, but again, this one is a little fake. I do sell these in my shop if you're interested in one. So they come apart just like that, super easy, um, much easier than any other Blythe doll. The hair is nice. We will talk about what we're gonna do with the hair later. There's really not a lot of great alternative bodies, um, so we'll probably use her body. The petites have little painted on underwear. The eye mechanism on the petite dolls is the type of eye mechanism that rotates up and down as the doll is moved. So um, when she's up, they're open, and when she's laying down, they are closed. Um, so the eyelashes are pretty easy to pull out. As you can see, I just pulled them right out. Um, the eye chips, there's no open back. You can't push them out the back. So you do kind of have to pry them out the front. Um, which can cause a little bit of damage to the eyelid. I don't know if you can see where there's a little bit of damage. So you just wanna be really, really careful when you're prying it out. I use a really long needle to do that. Um, and you just wanna make sure that you're not damaging the eyelid as much as possible because you will have to sand it. Um, so just try not to pry too hard on there. And do that in a minute a little bit harder to get it off and then you'll have the front and back plate with that one little screw in there um, so I don't necessarily have a plan yet for this doll I've wanted to do one for quite some time so we're gonna work on this tiny little little doll I'm probably not gonna do much talking in this video I'm just gonna have you guys watch me work um, but we'll see so let's get started on her
Okay, everyone so I've been working on this doll and I've gotten to a point where I'm a little bit frustrated and unsure about what I'm doing so I wanted to stop and give you an update and probably end this video for now um, so basically I was following the instructions that I saw online um, the only thing that I was doing differently is instead of mixing all the paints together I just bought some flesh tone paint and the color matching didn't really seem to be an issue so I thought that was fine but I was trying just to cover the cheeks where the clay was like the video was talking about and it wasn't working it was not blending in with the rest of the faceplate even though the color matching was there, it just was not blending in. So then I thought, okay, well, maybe I need to use the paint on the entire faceplate. And at first that seemed like it was working. Um, and as you can see in general, um, it worked. But there were a couple things that weren't working. One of them was it was giving the, the skin a very bumpy texture. I was using makeup sponges to kind of pat the paint on, um, but layer after layer kept making it bumpy. And so I was thinking it might have been because I wasn't thinning the paint enough. Um, and I kind of just kept going and then even tried to apply a little bit of color, but it just kept getting worse and worse to the point where I knew it wasn't going to look good. So I decided to stop the madness and sand down a little bit, which as you can see, removed some of the paint, of course. Um, so it's much smoother now, which is good, and it's still got some coverage, but I don't know what's gonna happen now if I try to put some more paint on there. I'm, that's what I'm gonna try to do. Um, I feel like I've sanded it pretty well, 
where it was bumpy, but you can see that there are some parts with a lot more paint missing than others, and I'm not sure how well that's going to cover. So I'm a little bit frustrated and thinking about just scrapping the doll. I really don't want to since I have already spent so much time on her. Um, so I am going to now try to put on another layer of paint and see what happens. Um, and then I might just take a bit of a break from this doll because I would like to get another doll done soon um, and I don't wanna keep worrying about this doll. So I thought we would do this together today and see what happens. Um, and if it doesn't work, I will just end this video for now and maybe we'll pick up later when I feel more motivated to work on it. Um, so anyway, I'm thinning down the paint. The video that I was watching said it should be kind of the consistency of milk. Um, and I think what part of my issue was is the first layer was okay, but then I kept adding from the same paint that was drying a little bit. That's the only thing I can think of that was the issue. I am gonna keep using this sponge because I really don't have any other option here. Um, the other thing is, is when it first goes on, it seems to cover really well and look good, but it just seems to dry really um, not great. The other thing that I did I think differently because I kind of forgot and didn't really think about it is I was spraying between layers with Mr. Super Clear and I actually don't think that she does that in the video that I watched. Um, so I don't know if that maybe caused some of it. I'm not really sure. So like I said, I'm a little disappointed right now, but I'm hoping that we can still maybe get at least to a point where she could be finished and be cute in her own way. So let's do this layer and we'll do maybe a couple layers and see, see how she looks. Okay, so I've done a couple layers and one of the things I learned um, is that when you pat it on, you have to be really careful to make sure that you pat out any bubbles or any texture. Um, I did much better this time. It's still kind of bumpy. Um, the coverage is better. I'm going to do one more layer and if it doesn't look right, I think I'm going to, I went on a bike ride and I thought about the doll and I have an idea of something different and unique to do with her if this doesn't work, uh, which I think will be really cute. So I'm gonna do one more layer of paint and I'm also going to spray her with the Mr. Super Clear Semi-Gloss and hopefully that maybe makes the chalky look go away. Um, otherwise, I think going forward, maybe I need to just invest in a, um, what's it called? Um, sprayer. Why can't I think of the name of it? A, um, uh, spray gun. What are they called? Gosh, don't you hate when your mind goes completely blank when you're in the middle of talking to somebody? Airbrush. That's what I'm trying to say. So I, I think that that's kind of the point of an airbrush is that it goes on more smoothly. So if you can see what I'm doing here with those bumps, you have to make sure you pat all those out like right away. If they dry, that's what's giving it texture. I also noticed that once the sponge, once the paint has dried on the sponge, that seems to be causing it. So I'm trying not to use the same sponge um, the whole time. Those are kind of the two things that 
I've noticed this time around. So it's a really nice day today. So there's a lot of people outside making noise, but I really want to get this video done. So bear with me on that. Okay, so here's what it looks like with a coat of the semi-gloss. It really didn't help as much as I hoped it would. You can still see um, it, the texture is bumpy. It's definitely not as bad as it was the first time around. Um, so I thought I might try just adding a little bit of color while you guys are on the video um, and just see how it takes it. And then, like I said, I'm just going to kind of end this for now and um, maybe work on something else for a while and see what I'm gonna do about this doll. I don't know. I, I don't really like the way that it came out. Some of it's good, like I do like the, the cheeks and the way that they look as far as um, the clay making them poofier, but the paint is just not what I want. It doesn't look good. So, you can see that it, it takes the paint um, and maybe I'll be able to kind of rescue it that way. Uh, so I'll keep you guys updated and let you know what she turns out like. Otherwise, for now, that's it. So thank you always for watching and see you later.